Hi, welcome to Car Auctions Weekly. There was a ton of value in the auctions this past week, but the big story was YouTubers slash influencers selling their cars. There was Gears and Gasoline and the Stradman auctioned off their car. Let's see who won. Before we get into those auctions, I want to thank you for joining me today, and if you like this content, please subscribe. We have some great things coming down the road, and I wouldn't want you to miss it. This week, we're going to jump right into the auctions. Here at Car Auctions Weekly, we cover the daily auctions via YouTube Shorts, as well as sometimes Facebook Reels, and we're going to cover the interesting, significant, and sometimes amusing auctions that happen on cars and bids, as well as bring a trailer. Now let's get right into the action. We're going to start it off with cars and bids and gears and gasolines 2008 Mitsubishi Evo 10. So here it is in the auction. I think that it's really tough to auction off a car that's this heavily modified and it has such a small audience, but obviously there was a whole lot of interest in this. And so this car went for 51,000. Uh, it looks phenomenal and has a lot of modifications to it and I think they did a good job at promoting it as well as for selling it and uh, at 51000 I think it got a good amount of money obviously it took a whole lot more money to build this car than that but it was a good auction next up was the clear winner for the amount of comments that came in an auction as well as views the comments however got beat in the following auction that we're going to show. Anyhow, we're going to jump right into the Stradman's Z06. So this sold for $218,000. It came without a warranty because of an agreement that was signed when he purchased the car. Uh, it's believed he paid MSRP, and so this went for about 50 k over MSRP. For a car that doesn't have a warranty, that's pretty decent. So this got a lot of attention. It turned into a zoo in the comments for a while, and there was all kinds of accusations. Most of that got swept under the rug as things like that normally do. And uh, But it was quite entertaining, and it was an enjoyable auction to watch. Not to be outdone, the next car surpassed the Stradman Z06 in the amount of comments and engagement on the auction. So we're going to jump right over to this 05 Carrera GT. So there was only 1,200 of them made, right? And they go for well over a million dollars. Well, this one had been involved in an accident and quite a significant accident. On the Carfax, it said moderate. And moderate is typically pretty bad. And it was almost every corner on this thing. It had been repaired and it's drivable, but it was not to factory specifications. And so it got a lot of engagement. I was quite surprised that it did not sell at 600,000. The people in the comments were incredibly surprised. And so this ended up being probably the most entertaining auction. Okay, wow, that was amazing. Those three cars were quite engaging and they received a ton of attention on cars and bids. So now we're gonna slow things down just a tad and we're gonna jump over to an 89 Toyota pickup truck, the SR5 uh, 4x4. And so this thing was in amazing shape. It had one little rest spot, but it was a 30,000 mile, 34 year old pickup truck. Quite incredible in that fact and so it got a little bit of attention in the comments towards the end and people were surprised that it sold for the 32750 that it sold for but I mean where are you going to find a 34 year old Toyota pickup truck with 30,000 miles on it in basically new condition so uh, I, I, I really enjoyed this auction the truck was great and whoever got it I'm sure is going to enjoy it. Since we're in the Wayback Machine, next we're going to take a look at a car that Doug DeMiro did a review on, and it's on his website now on YouTube as well. And and uh, this is a beautiful 95 Ford Taurus SHO. That stood for super high output for anybody that was wondering. And so this car had some mileage on it. It wasn't in perfect shape, but it was in really good shape. And I mean, it went for 4500 bucks, right? But... Uh, I had a buddy way back in the day, and, and uh, he had one of these cars. It had the manual on it. This one had an auto. But it was uh, this was a good example, and, and uh, it got a lot of attention. All right, now we're going to jump into something that's a little bit more trendy and certainly brighter. Um, and this was a special 
car for me. I really enjoyed this one. And so this was a 90 BMW 325i Touring, but it had modifications on it, as you can tell. So this thing looks like an M3. And it plays the part as well. It had an M54, which was from an E46 330i. Reportedly, it had the ZHP tune on it, if I'm not mistaken, which gives it a little bit more RPM, a little bit more horsepower. And so this car just looked amazing. And I'm sure the builder, apparently he was the seller as well, put a ton of time into this thing. And so it's a lot of custom fabrication to make it look this good and make it look like an M3 Touring, if you will. And so it sold for $37,750. I was actually hoping to bid on it much lower than that, um, but there was a lot of people who thought it was going to go a lot higher than that as well. This was a great auction and a phenomenal car. All right. Bring a Trailer had some great auctions this week as well. Before we jump into those, I want to thank you for joining me this week. I love cars and I love car auctions. If there's cars that you think would be good for future weeks, then just let me know in the comments section and we'll take a look at those. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. It really helps the channel grow. Now onto the auctions on Bring a Trailer, and they had some doozies this week. First, we're gonna kick it off with this 1974 Maserati Bora 4.9. Apparently there's only 250 of these things made with that 4.9 liter engine. And there's only been seven sold on Bring a Trailer, and this ranks as number two. It was originally sold in LA, and then it was taken to Holland, and then back to the US where it underwent a full restoration. I just love the style of this car, and let me scroll down. Look at the seats on this thing. There's no lumbar support there. Anyhow, this car had all the pictures and all the paperwork, and aside from the AC not working, it was a perfect car, in my opinion. Next up, we're going to jump to a slightly more modern car. This four mile, you got that right, four mile 2006 GT. And so this car probably has more miles being pushed around in garages on dollies than it does on the actual odometer. It was a great car though, and obviously it's been showroom kept and, and on display the whole time. And so I think that's great. I love cars that are driven, but nonetheless, this one was great. It went for the sixth highest price ever on Bring a Trailer, and the only cars that had been higher than that were heritage cars. And so this is the highest price at 605 for any GT that was a non-heritage. Next up, we're going to go visit our Bavarian friends with this 2013 E92 M3 Lime Rock Park Edition with the six-speed. So fantastic car, right? And, and this one had 37,000 miles on it and had been driven. And so this was a top three result for sales for E92s. And the other two cars that were above it were lower mileage Lime Rock Park Editions. All right, so we're going to virtually travel west from Bavaria now to go to the UK to visit our next car, which is a 1700 mile 2008 Lotus Exige. And so these cars are great. Full disclosure, I had a 2010 S260 and I love that car. I had it for a few years. This is many years ago. And so I'm surprised that these have not went up in value and crossed over the 100K mark, but they seem to be held down. I'm not entirely sure why. They're pretty limited production. They're pretty unique and special cars. And they are fragile in my opinion from a bodywork perspective. Uh, the engine's solid, the chassis solid, but it's a 2,000 pound car. It's incredibly light. Now let's take a look at the chart on this one of the recent sales that have happened and you'll notice that it is trending up as a whole. If you look at that now I know it's kind of uh, anecdotal just because there haven't been a ton of sales but the trend is up and this includes some base exiges and that type of thing and so uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with these cars over time. I suspect that they'll go up. Um, they are very special and unique. Carbon fiber seats, you name it. I, I'm six foot two and I fit comfortably in it with a helmet. And, and I did track mine. All right, now we're gonna double the weight of this Lotus Exige probably. I'm not perfectly sure, but it's probably pretty close to that. So another car that I've actually owned, I had a 2016 GT350. This one being a 2017 and had all of the mods on it. So it has 
twin turbo system making 920 wheel horsepower and this car has to be incredibly fast and incredibly easy to get into a tremendous amount of trouble this car sold for 66.5 and i think that was a decent result you know you're always taking a little bit of a risk when you buy somebody else's project all right that wraps up the auction coverage for this week I want to thank you for joining me today. I sincerely appreciate the support. Of note on the YouTube channel, there's a community poll and it has a few different options for content that I'm currently working on. And so if you go out there and vote on those, that'll help me prioritize which things I do first. I'll see you in the daily YouTube shorts with the daily coverage and then next week for the wrap up. Thank you for joining me and see you then.